there's a world experienced by white people and there's a world experienced by non-white people. Being a person of color in a white world is inherently traumatizing. People of color have to navigate through the trauma, daily trauma. From slums to Harvard, all life experiences that I've had, nowhere in this world is safe from the danger and threat of white women's tears. I've seen people of color CEOs and people of color tenured professors living in fear of white women tears. And I've actually seen them get into trouble all because a white woman decided that she got her feelings hurt and got offended and she decided to cry manipulatively through a whole performance. And the second she knew that the institutions were on her side, she stopped crying. That is a pattern to real life story. Listen, no one is telling anybody not to have fun. We are saying just to make space for how a lot of the trends and a lot of the things that people do for fun land on people of color very differently. And when you don't make space for that, and when you don't practice perspective taking, you protect the world from becoming more racially inclusive. When people of color show up to tell you that I've experienced that very differently, who do you help by resisting to listen? Listen, I've tried owning this trend. I know a lot of people who spoke out about this trend. Making it so hostile that people of color do not speak about how they're experiencing the world is racist and the opposite of diversity, inclusion, and belonging. Listen, there's a reason why the mental health system right now is considered broken by a lot of people of color. Because the definition of comfort in the current system is that of a white person. People of color simply have nowhere to go and safely talk about their racial trauma. Make space, that's all. When people of color show up to tell you that I've experienced that very differently, who do you help by resisting to listen? Make space, that's all. So can we just talk about the other side of the same token, like the people in the comment section on this video, plus, you know, all the other duets and stitches of the video, like people saying, oh, well, you know, it was really about how women are told to hide their tears behind closed doors. Is that really what the message is, though? Really, though? Really? Because... Because I thought, maybe this is just me, but I thought, specifically, even as a black woman, who absolutely does not get to show any emotion other than, hi, in person, I thought that men also were told not to show emotion. So, like, mm, I don't, I don't know. No. Turn it off. Call me crazy, but that was a little bit too convincing. Turn it. Okay, so I've seen this video multiple times now and I have to address it. Um, I realize that y'all think this is cute. Um, here's the problem with your tears. Your tears have often villainized people of color because you use it as a weapon. You use it as a way to express your discomfort in a way that can end someone's life. We remember Barbecue Becky. We remember the crazy girl at the central park who like tried to get people arrested and was making like false accusations your tears are weapons and what you're showing the world is that you can turn it off because you're not afraid but your tears are scarier than most horror movies i want you to think about that before you play in this tiktok stairs in negro the jokes write themselves at this point. Um, I'm not going to say anything, but we all are thinking the same thing, right? Right? And I'm not saying these girls are evil, but to be proud of doing something like that and you know your tears are dangerous as hell, I would not be proud of that. And what I've noticed is when there are white women doing this trend, they're doing that. Meanwhile, other women are just doing like makeup and showing that it's empowering, that they can go through anything and be resilient. But this, that, that made me scared. And you know, I understand that it's an emotional response or a trigger response if parents have been doing that or people have been shutting you down for years and you just turn off the emotion. But white women tears are 
fucking dangerous and that was that literally shook me to my core and yeah I wouldn't be proud of doing that like that you know but you know I can't remember what all the signs of the apocalypse are but I'm pretty sure the next generation of Karens realizing that they have a superpower is one of them pray This shit is scarier than Candyman. Y'all know Candyman. Turn it off. Yeah, that's some scary shit right there. Hands down. Speechless. Absolutely speechless. that guy's name that said white women are the, uh, as in the deadliest people on this planet yeah 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 it's given very reminds me of Emmett Till mm -mm, this is not giving what it's supposed to give no no mm -mm. no yeah this is the scariest trend that has ever been a thing on tiktok because nah like the switch was <laughs> mm. <laughs> the switch was scary okay that's how they be framing it you know um yeah this is scary it's not giving turn it understand how dangerous this threat is to them forget about how often white women tears have landed poc either dead or in jail that's one of the reasons why i don't even trust y'all when y'all having your little breakdowns y'all don't understand how dangerous trends can even be to yourself god forbid imagine you become a victim of sexual assault the defense lawyer of your abuser pulls up your video of you putting on your crocodile tears now the whole jury is questioning whether all of this that you're doing in front of them is real. Do y'all not see how things can come back and bite you in the ass? And I'm not saying it's okay for the defense lawyer to do all of that. I'm just saying, use your common sense. Turn it off. I just need the ghost of Emmett Till to... Um come and haunt you bitches for the next 13 years because this shit is problematic y'all is stupid ain't you i hope y'all don't got no damn open court cases or part of the damn me too movement or whatever the fuck because ooh, child mm, 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 mm. that's trifling turn it off oh the tenacity of your caucasity are you really that stupid i mean hello becky's over there look what you just started you all put other white women at risk and you put them on the chopping block. Now, most people of a different race would be like, eh, they all deserve it. But no, we don't see it like that. We see the fact that you also put other people of color, women, at risk. But primarily white women at this moment because nobody in their right mind is going to physically, mentally, emotionally, verbally, financially believe anything that white women are going to say. Especially if she needs to go to a judge because she needs a restraining order, she was raped, or she was abused in any way, shape, or form. Fake it till you make it, right? She needs to help mental health. She needs to go to the doctors for any reason. Just give her a pill and send her home. Officer, I need help. This guy's assaulted me. Oh, I think you're the abuser. I could keep going. But I'll sit back and eat my popcorn and drink my soda and watch. Okay, so 
this is high level creep. Back in 2018, Lovey Ajayi wrote an article about uh, the weaponizing of white women's tears and how dangerous they are to black people. Now, some of you may be familiar with how the Tulsa massacre got started because of white women's tears and how Emmett Till was murdered because of white women's tears. But during the Reconstruction era, there were many instances where black people were hung and um, black towns were burned to the ground because allegedly a white woman was attacked. As someone who is a mother of two black boys, I can tell you the tears of white women really do bother me. People have lost their lives and their freedom because white women know how to turn it on and turn it off when it's convenient. Turn it off. Turn There are many black creators talking about how this trend that a lot of white women have taken over, actually, of crying and then snapping it off and smirking is so dangerous and triggering. And there's many people in the comment section being like, it's just an acting trend. It is not acting when white women tears are frequently weaponized against us. I literally had this happen to me in my master's program where a few white women went and complained about the fact that I was appropriately addressing white supremacy. And um, they just were so uncomfortable with the fact that I was very bold about it. And if I did not have a man of color as my program director, my outcomes would have been very different and I may not have a career today. White women tears are dangerous for people of color. They just are. As my grandmama would say, this ain't sitting right with my spirit. It just ain't sitting right with my spirit, all right? See, when you have grown up in predominantly white neighborhoods with brothers, went to predominantly white educational institutions, and now work in a predominantly white field, baby, this is triggering, okay? It's giving me very much Emmett Till. It's giving me very much you cannot go to a house party in that neighborhood. It is giving me very much she was mean to me in the break room. See, when you've been on the opposite side of those white girl tears, you know what the deal is. I know that these ladies are probably lovely individuals, but this trend ain't it. Helen of Troy. The face that launched the thousand ships. It is legend that her beauty was so vast, so popular, that nations would burn civilizations to the ground just for a glimpse of it. This is posited as a good thing to we, the people. Why am I bringing this up with this compilation? A lot of American societies were burned down because of the tear-stricken visage of a white woman. It's just, it's weird. So, it's just weird. Now I know what my mother was talking about. Way before she died, my mother explained to me on interracial dating and how white women have the ability to get a black man in trouble. And I believe that is what she meant. And I also remember my step cousin telling me the story of how a white woman got my step uncle in trouble because of that tactic. White women's tears are the deadliest weapon to the black community, especially to black men. Let that sink in. Let me play you a little video. White women have been doing this for literally hundreds of years. It has always been to the detriment of Black people. Rosewood, Black Wall Street, up until recent times, 
White women have been weaponizing their tears. Black men especially have died for it. Black Wall Street was burned down to the ground for it. And now y'all have made it a trend on TikTok. What is amazing to me is the caucastic arrogance of all of these white girls doing this. I also noticed the age group. That's learned behavior that not one BIPOC person walking is going to deal with. Consider this a notice. Turn it off. Every single day on this app, we come on here and tell y'all that their tears are dangerous. And y'all sit there and go, what do you mean? What is that? What, what are you saying? Go look at the sound. They prove us right every single time. The entire trend. <laughs> now I'm sitting here imagining all the lives that could have been saved. Like so many lives could have been saved. Hmm. There were black rapists with white victims, but were relatively rare. The brute character, sure, was a red herring, a myth used to justify a lynching, and which in turn was used as a social control mechanism to instill fear in the black community. Turn it off. So I've seen a few versions of this, these kind of videos with the women, specifically more often than not white women, who are fake crying, recording it, and then showing on a dime how quickly they can turn it off like everything's fine. Great actresses. But I have to question whether they realize the potential harm that something like this can cause. I, I wonder if, if they know the story of Emmett Till or a litany of others who have been directly impacted or hurt by the contrived fake actions like weaponized tears, weaponized calls to the police, and the potentially life-ending results. This isn't a trend. This is gross. Turn it off. This video right here of these white women crying, turning on the tears and turning it off, this makes me so angry. This is not funny or a joke. White women tears have been killing us for centuries. One example is Emmett Till. Anytime a white woman cries, that's a cause to kill us. And their tears are used as a form of manipulation. This makes me so angry. Um, I do not like this trend at all. I'm going to be careful about what I say uh, because a lot of black people's things talking about this trend have been taken down, but w this is dangerous. Like, if you need me to explain why this trend is dangerous, I'll message you or do it in the comments because if I say it, on this video, it's going to get taken down, but I do not like this. This makes me uncomfortable. I fucking knew it. Like, this don't sit right with my soul. And if you're thinking about doing this fucking trend, especially if you're fucking white and a white woman, don't. Fucking don't. Just don't. Turn it off. There it is, what we knew all along. How we end up with strange fruit. We come into contact with so many scared officers. You as well have blood dripping down your face because those tears and your grandmother's tears and your great grandmother's tears are responsible for the deaths of millions. This is why we can't trust your feminism. This is why we don't want you calling us cis. This isn't a trend, it's a tradition.
This is not the trend, but I just don't want to tell you, I want to show you. Now we've heard of the Tulsa massacre just a few weeks ago, it was 100 years since the massacre. The massacre was started by tears from a white woman, Sarah Pate. But let's not stop there. Let's talk about Rosewood too. Rosewood started with accusations from a white woman. Let's not stop there. Let's talk about Emmett Till too. Emmett Till was killed from accusations from a white woman. And even years later, she said she lied. But why just stop there? This is recent history too. A Michigan woman lied and said four black men kidnapped and raped her. But let's not just stop there. Susan Smith, a mother who killed her kids, said it was a black man. And the tragic case attracted worldwide attention and stirred racial tension after Smith initially told police that it was a black man that had carjacked her and kidnapped her children. This trend is disturbing, but if anything, it's proving what we already know, that there's a switch in there and it can be turned on and off at any moment. The fact that this has become a trend, it's a trend. White women tears is a trend. They said forget Emmett Till, forget Tulsa, forget Rosewood, forget any instance that have taken place against black bodies or people of color. And let's make what we're capable of doing, our power, our weapon, a trend. And then everybody's all like, oh my God, it's so amazing. Ah, like you're trying to excuse it. No, 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 no. No, no, no. White women's tears are a weapon. White women's tears are the demise of black men and black women. And I don't care what anybody say. History proves it. Anything that has started historically and dangerously against black people started because of the myth or the factual actions of white women's tears. And I'm out. Same white tears that got Emmett Till killed. Same tears that got Tamir Rice killed. Same tears that got Anthony J. Thompson Jr. killed. Dangerous and fucked up. Turn it off. Well, they turned it off good, didn't they? Thank you, Patricia Ripley. The woman that was in Florida line saying that a black man kidnap her son now she's they found that she lied she's in jail thank you susan smith an african-american stole your child too huh two of them right but now you serving a 48 year in prison right oh thank you amy cooper that you cry wolf in the park saying a black man was bothering you don't nobody want you won't y'all stop all that, all that lying, but karma will get you. You just wait. It's going to get you. Turn it off. Turn it off. Carolyn Dunham's fake tears cost the death of Emmett too. He was brutally lynched and thrown in the Tallahatchie River to rot. His body was found unrecognizable. His mother had an open casket funeral to show what white woman tears do. Emmett Till apparently referred to a female white store clerk as baby. Several days later, the woman's husband and brother took Till from his uncle's home, beat him to death. His head was crushed, one eye was gouged out, and they threw his body until a Tallahatchie. Turn it off. When I first saw this trend, I really didn't get it. I was like, okay. But seeing this video, wow. It makes you really think. Let's go watch the whole video and read the comments. The comments is what's really going to make you think.